Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be starting a brand new series of Strategic Command World War I. This is actually the newest game out in the Strategic Command series. Uh, we had been playing a fair bit of Strategic Command World War II World at War, uh, which is the global conflict in the Second World War. Um, but we had previously played Strategic Command World War I when it came out, as the Central Powers, and we won the war as the Central Powers. Um, it was a bloody affair. Uh, I'm not sure how close it was, but we did end up winning uh, pretty decisively. And uh, in today's uh, stream or episode, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, we're going to start a new series playing as the Entente. So we're going to go ahead and jump in here and play a single player. We're going to play the 1914 scenario, Call to Arms, basically the entire war scenario. Um... Victory conditions, if you look here, you can see the Central Powers obtain a major victory if any two of France, Russia, and the UK have surrendered or their national morale is below 1%. They earn a minor victory if on the 11th of November 1918 neither side has won a major victory and the Central Powers hold Berlin, Vienna, Constantinople, Paris, and Warsaw. So basically taking the uh, Russian capital of, uh, of Poland, or I guess the historical capital of Poland, but under Russian control, as well as knocking France out of the war or taking Paris, while also holding on to their own capitals. In the Entente side, uh, we earn a major victory if Germany surrenders or its national morale drops below 1%. That's kind of interesting that uh, you get a major victory just by causing Germany to surrender. Uh, meanwhile, the minor victory for the Entente is if neither side has won a major victory, but the Entente hold London, Paris, Warsaw, and Cairo. So basically just making sure that they hold on to enough of their territory, that they don't lose Warsaw, that they don't lose Cairo, and that they hold their own capitals will earn a minor victory for the Entente. So, um, we're just going to play the campaign. I should get an option here. We'll choose the Entente. I'm going to keep the bonuses and everything like that uh, down. I'm not going to give the computer bonuses here. Uh, it was a very difficult game against the AI where we gave him kind of a one bonus and everything. And I haven't played as the Entente before, and I haven't played the World War One game in quite a while. So we're just going to play it straight, flat, no bonuses. Okay, so we'll keep all of this the same, although I am going to jump into advanced here and I am going to mess with some of the scripts. The one thing I am going to do to make it more difficult is I am going to go ahead and go to the belligerent tab and turn off the Italy declares war on the Ottoman Empire, Germany, and Austro-Hungary -Hung event list. I don't know exactly how these scripts work. I haven't really found anything with... I guess we can turn off the Italy Entente 1914-15... Uh, scenarios here so they won't join the Entente I guess there, this means they will join the Central Powers in 1915 or at least there's an event that can trigger that can cause them to join the Entente in 1915 um, so we'll see how that uh, how that plays out I don't think we're going to mess with any of the other scripts or events in the game there's a I don't know, I was going to say there's a possible, it looks like USA Entente, Russia pulls out of the war, USA Entente, Russia surrenders, USA Entente 1917, those are all different events that can trigger. Okay. Is there a scenario where Poland becomes independent and then joins the Entente? That's interesting. I don't really know, there's a whole bunch of different scripts and things like that that you can mess with, but I think those are the only ones I'm gonna gonna go ahead and mess with. And we'll go ahead and move forward. So we're gonna keep the 3D counter styles. You can go with the uh well actually those are all 3D, so if we turn 3D units off, you can go with sort of the traditional NATO type counters, but I find the 3D counters a little bit more enjoyable, personally. So let's jump in and see what happens here. Britain declares war on Germany. Every man is expected to do his duty for king and country. A call to arms. German aggression will not go unpunished as Belgium fights on. Okay. So we're moving into the Central Powers deployment phase. Now, XZ, I will probably play some war plan Pacific. How much, I guess, will be determined based on what I think of the game. But we will play some. No NATO counters. Muh. Immersion. <laughs> 
All right, so you can see the Central Powers get to deploy their units, then they get to declare war on Belgium, and then they get to move first before we do anything. The UK does join the Entente right away, and the Germans are going to begin their advance right away as well. So you can see that here the French uh, on the border of Germany have quite a few troops there, but they don't really have anything over the border toward Belgium. Meanwhile, the Germans are deploying troops on their own border, and they're also apparently advancing some troops at least close to the border with the uh, Russians, although I assume they will not push too hard there. The Austro-Hungarian border with the Russians is pretty sparse as well. Yeah, I'll probably be playing a hell of a lot of War at Sea when that comes out. I did see the announcement, Newhauser. Maybe I should make a video about it. Okay. Great naval battles? Yeah. A little bit. Okay, so you can see the Germans have begun their advance on Liege. It only took them two attacks to destroy the unit there. Meanwhile, their cavalry is going to sweep through here. Attack Brussels directly with their infantry there. Hopefully they don't take the city. Doesn't look like they will. Meanwhile, they're attacking along the French border as well. Von Schlieffen would not be pleased. Uh, they're also driving south toward Montenegro, and the Austro-Hungarians are launching an attack on Belgrade. Oh my god, they took it? When I attacked Belgrade as Austria-Hungary, I never took it on the first try. Or at least they destroyed the garrison unit there. Uh, they took it. Okay, so Brussels held, but the fall of Belgrade right away is deeply ahistorical and will likely make things much more challenging for us. That's going to be a real kick in the nuts. Uh, Alright, hopefully that's about it. Waiting to see if the AI has anything else in store for us. Serbian morale falls due to the loss of Belgrade. They move the capital to Nish. Luxembourg surrenders. They plunder some MPPs from it. That's fine. The Gubin evades pursuit or uh, evades its pursuers in the Mediterranean, so it makes it to Constantinople. Austria-Hungary is deploying additional units to the border of Serbia. Bulgaria is taking an increasing interest in the events in Serbia. Meanwhile, the French and Russians continue their mobilization. So you can see more units continue to deploy. The one, I guess one of the big differences in this game is in the World War II games, you generally kind of have a soft beginning of the war where you've got a, you've got some diplomacy to do with other allies. You've got to, you know, kind of slowly start building your units up. This game kind of starts like hard and fast, just immediately throwing you into the, into the grinder. And you don't really have a lot of money set aside for the first few turns. Essentially, all your money's eaten up by your troops just auto-deploying. So you can, you can, this game has a quicker pace to start. Meanwhile, you can say bringing Romania into the war. This is just sort of a note. The Romanians may be tempted to enter the war on our side if we can advance into Austria-Hungary. Capturing Krakow, Lemberg, and Premzel will encourage Romania to pursue its ambitions in Trans. Albania. Also consider using diplomacy to move Romania toward the Entente. Be bold and the war can be won. Grand Duke Nicholas, Supreme Commander. Uh, our Serbian ally. Serbia is not a wealthy country, but it has, experience, it has an experienced army that with our assistance should be able to tie up significant enemy forces. It is therefore recommended we consider sending supplies to the, by, by sea to the Serbs. Uh, to do this on the war maps, uh, at the top of the screen of the convoy map, then click on the French flag and you can adjust the number of military production points to be sent by sea to Serbia every turn. The Russians can also aid Serbia by sending uh, resources through the rail lines there. Meanwhile, the British have some immediate priorities. They need to, uh, number one priority needs to be is to assist the French in defending the homeland from invasion. At the same time, the Royal Navy can launch a blockade to cut off German, Germany's food imports from many neutrals. This will reduce the national morale, but be warned it will annoy the USA from time to time. To institute the blockade, put naval units on the merchant ship icons that appear on the map in the highlighted locations. Note, the more ships used, the better, and the northern blockade from Scapa Flow to Norway will be the more effective location. 
We can also lay mines in the strategic locations to delay enemy shipping or to damage enemy shipping, and there can be they can be laid one per turn by destroyers and torpedo boats. As they can sink neutral shipping, it is best not to place them on or adjacent to convoy routes from neutral countries like Norway and Sweden. Doing so would likely trigger a negative diplomatic reaction. To lay a minefield, right-click on the minefield unit, laying unit, and select the adjacent hex where you would like to lay it. The total number of mines that can be laid by uh, can be increased through researching naval warfare. If a unit does strike the enemy minefield, it will lose 2 to 5 strength points and its morale will be reduced, so beware the enemy will be laying mines too. Okay. Secretary of, Law, er, of War, Lord, a little blah of words. Secretary of State for War, Lord Kitchener. The initial units comprising the British Expeditionary Force, which is ready for service on the continent, are set to sail to France. The Expeditionary Force consists of the experienced First and Second Corps and a headquarter unit commanded by Sir John French. Arrangements have been made to deploy the Corps d'Amin, with Sir John French setting up his headquarter at Rouen. Shipping these units to France will cost 50 MPPs. Would you like to send the British Expeditionary Force to France? Yes. Or would you rather deploy it to the UK? No. This is one of those events in the game that I don't really fully understand. The game has a lot of these type events, where basically it's like, you have a choice, but there's no reason to choose no. Like, why would you, why do you give people choices where there's not really a reason not to? I guess it, it gives you more flexibility as a player if you really want to play A historically. But even this, even this little note here says, like, you really shouldn't not choose yes. Um, so I don't know. Whatever. We'll, we'll choose yes. All right. The French have two corps that are ready for deployment. The third and the first, both near Paris. So we'll go ahead and deploy those right away sort of to the northeast of the city, shielding it from any flanking attack that may sweep down on us. Uh, meanwhile, the British Expeditionary Force, I don't think it arrives till the next turn, so that kind of sucks. Reinforce the troops in Brussels. Maybe move our uh, corps at Yeeps, or however you pronounce that forward. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I guess first things first, let's go ahead and institute the blockade. So we need to put ships along this blockade line here in the North Sea that will affect Germany's national morale. There's also a distant blockade option, which obviously requires way more ships, uh, but can be done as well. The near blockade, however, is much more effective. So we'll go ahead and deploy some light forces here off to the east. And then we'll deploy our, uh, I guess, our heavier forces in on the closer hexes, but I am going to try and cover each one of these hexes. Mostly with light cruisers, as you can see, but we will deploy a few heavier ships on these sections. And then I'll deploy some of my dreadnoughts uh, on the distant blockade route as well. Just I think we get additional national morale bonuses if we do that. There's also sort of these additional sort of convoy national morale objectives. These are to stop enemy um, submarines from hurting our convoys. So you can see these red lines represent convoys from Canada. Uh, there's one down here from India, down here to Egypt. And so if we put units, if they put units on these national morale objectives um, that are on the convoy routes, they can influence our trade. If we put them there, it protects us from raiding. And so that can be, that can be a good result for us as well. But for the moment, I don't think Germany has too many submarines, so we'll go ahead and just ignore that for the moment. That may be unwise, but I don't, I'm don't. i not too worried about that uh, at the moment. How far can armored cruisers go? Can they reach? No, they can't. Like, I don't know what to do with the French Navy either. They kind of suck. I mean, I've got a little bit of money for the French, not a lot right now. I guess we can try and throw some French ships up on the distant blockade. But I'm not, I mean, this is a ton of ships to cover this whole distant blockade. Plus the near blockade, I think, gives you most of the benefits. You know, these are like the old pre-dreadnought battleships here in port in the channel. Both blockades stack. Well, that's good to know. All right, so... Brussels held for the time being. I need to deploy more troops here. 
Can we hurt these guys? I wonder if it's worth trying to shoot the, uh, the enemy troops up a bit. I think I'm going to pull this unit back, swap in a fresh unit in here. Okay. I know double timing them is actually really bad for morale. Still kind of considering it. Yeah, I mean, you the trenches kind of automatically get dug if you don't move your unit. Or maybe I can dig trenches. I thought they automatically got dug. But I guess I can do that? So, smart. Uh... Need to rotate these things so they're either one of those is particularly ideal, but right, I don't have money to operate troops here, so they're gonna potentially get in here a bit. I could throw my cavalry south of Brussels, that might delay their advance west a little bit. Got two. I'm. G I hate to do it, but I'm gonna force march these guys up to Reims. And these guys. I mean. Oh shoot! I should have undone that. That's where the British headquarters is gonna deploy. All right. So we're gonna hold these Belgian troops in place. I think. I guess we can try and swing these guys east of Brussels as a blocking force, move this headquarters back to here. So they're pretty well blocked from breaking west. Okay. Good one. Good one, P. Warner. Um, all right, so the rest of these guys I think we'll keep in place for the time being. I don't have any money to spend on the, on the Entente powers at the moment, so really it's just sort of waiting. I could launch some limited counterattacks. They, they might have a chance of being a little bit successful, but I don't want to take casualties if I don't need to. Manny501, thanks for the follow. Um, so we're going to leave these troops in place for now. We'll get two more British in infantry corps in this vicinity here along this line. So by putting these French troops and cavalry in place, I think we have a bit of a tripwire for a new front line if needed. I think the Germans will probably have to spend the majority of this next turn just trying to attack and take Brussels and then Antwerp to the north. So we're probably okay from a breakout for at least one more turn. Meanwhile, I don't even know what to do here in um, <laughs> in Serbia with the fall of Belgrade on turn one. I mean, that's pretty devastating. Can we move and entrench the same turn? We can. Can I reinforce and entrench on the same turn? I cannot. Okay, that's good to know. After the fact, I guess. I don't think I have any money to operate him, do I? No. So we'll march these guys up here. These guys are already dug in, aren't they? No, they're not. All right. Any chance of retaking Belgrade? Probably not. Okay. All 
All right, so we're moving. We're, we're trying to dig in behind the river here. Belgrade is obviously on the opposite side of, uh, of the river. Is this the Danube? Of the Danube? But um, they've only got one hex on the opposite side of the river. Trying to cross the river against entrenched troops should be difficult for them. That's really all there is to do with Serbia right now. We could go up to the war maps section here and then look at our convoy setup and see what we want to do. Like, does it make sense to... Well, I don't even see a an option here. Oh, friend shipments to Serbia. So we can put how much of our income? Max of 10%. They're going to need the money, so we'll give them 10% of our income. That's 26 MPPs. The British can send some resources to Russia. They're already sending 5%. We'll bump that up to 15. The Russians... Oops. The Russians can also send a percent of their income to Serbia, I think. So the Russians will send 5% of their income to Serbia. So Serbia will get 10 MPPs from Russia and 26 from France. U.S. shipments to the U.K., 75% of U.S. MPPs, really, are going to the U.K.? We can decrease that. Interesting. So the U.S. is neutral, but it's already sending a lot of money to the British. I'm assuming that's, like, simulated in, in economic activities or whatever. Okay, any of these things? Ah. Click on the wrong buttons. Do any of these things have any controls? Yeah, not really. All right. Um, by the way, there's also no off-map, like, Asia, right? It doesn't look like it. Thanks for the follow, uh, Brainio. All right, so now to the Russian front. So we've kind of done what we can. I don't have any money to do anything with at the moment. But we could try and kill this Austrian cavalry near Tarnopol. I would like to take the oil fields in Galicia. They're a national morale objective for us. So we will do that. But first things first, let's go ahead and uh, try to destroy that cavalry. So we get a 2-2 two to two there. 2-2. Two to two. Even even casualties for me, if I'm if I'm fighting the Russian the Russians, or if I'm if I am the Russians and I get even odds, I will attack every time. Even two to one against, I'll probably just take the risk. Got him! All right, so we destroyed that enemy cavalry unit. All right, advance here. Got him. All right, so we took the oil fields this turn as well. I'm not going to attack Lemberg itself at the moment. Meanwhile, we're going to be one hex away from Stanislaw, which is a major objective as well, a national morale objective. So good results on the uh, Austro-Hungarian front. Two enemy units destroyed and a national morale objective taken. We did lose some casualties, but not even 50% of any of our units. Primzel, we know, is going to be garrisoned by Austro-Hungarian troops. Same for Krakow, likely. So I don't want to advance too aggressively on them. I also do have to worry about sort of containing the Germans on the uh, Prussian frontier. So I'm going to move some troops here. We're going to move these guys into the rear of Gumden, or however you pronounce that. Can I swing these guys in behind? No, not really. Do I have any money for the Russians to rail any troops? No. Okay. All right, so we'll do this. We'll move these troops south from... Ah, the detachment got caught by German troops at Memel. Wolfpack, thank you very much for the raid. Hope you guys had a good time in IL-2. Dadden and Kestrel33, thanks for the follows. We're playing some Strategic Command uh, World War One, which is a little bit different than a real-time flying game. But, you know, they're games. 
All right, let's leave these troops in position here. I would like to get in behind this first German corps at Gumdenen and, and destroy it, but that'll take a few turns, likely. So we should rush right for the Tannenberg Forest. I think that would be the right place to engage the, engage the Germans. I'm sure they would never expect it. Um, all right, let's move these troops south from Warsaw. Let's try and engage this German corps, the Landwehr Corps. They seem a little bit uh, exposed. We'll move that, move that detachment in behind. Nice, we drove them back, which means I can pursue with these infantry. And cavalry. And we got them. So we just destroyed a German corps on the eastern front. I'll swing my cavalry south to try and get... There's got to be something in Krakow. God damn it. I didn't want to do that. Like, how does my cavalry not see them and then just stumble into an ambush like that? They should have at least two hex, two hex line of sight. No, no. The troops north of Premzel also just stumbled into a bit of a situation there. I knew Premzel was occupied. I didn't know they had troops east of Tar Tarnow, though. They didn't get hurt too bad. Right, we're going to leave these troops in position here to block any advance south from Johannesburg. We'll leave these garrisons in place. We'll go ahead and have them... Oh, they don't have the option of entrenching, huh? Three-sided trench directly north. Opposite side of the river. That should help them. Troops and Lutz. They'll entrench facing southwest. I did leave Novigorvsk unoccupied. Move these. Oh, I think I don't have any money to spend to rail these guys anywhere. So I guess this cavalry will take position at Novi Gorsk. Eh, we'll move them north. They don't get to entrench anyway. So they'll they'll hold the border. Alright. So we've got speed bumps between Warsaw in every direction. We've also destroyed one German core, which I think is good, I guess. Uh, blocking the road from Katowice to Lutz. Um, I suppose we'll move uh, air. I don't even know, like, these are fighters, right? Oh, no, they're recon bombers. Okay. They could be useful. Let's move them south to support the drive into the mountains. I really want to take. I really want to get into the mountains here. I want to take Stanislaw, Primzel, Lemberg. See if we can't take out sort of this forward position in these plains where the Austrians will be a little bit more exposed. Maybe destroy enough units to be able to drive toward Vienna and knock Austria-Hungary out of the war early. Maybe a man can dream, can't he? All right. I'm not going to attack here. Three to one is not. I'll do I'll do two to two, two to one, but three to one is a little bit too bloody for my take. I'll try and surround Gumdian, which I could do right now, but I don't think I could hold that position. So we'll wait for more troops. Hey sheep, sheepies! Thanks for the for the compliments or the the kind words. All right, so I think this is good. I don't have a lot else I can do right now. Is there anything I can do with the U.S. research? 75 MPPs, does it get me anything? Uh, production technology. We want that, right? That increases our... that Each new level of production technology research decreases by 5%. Industrial technology is, what's increase, what, is what increases MPPs. So let's actually hold off and then dump our money into industrial technology next turn. I really want to get our... Uh, our economy humming. And the more money the U.S. makes, the more money the British make, I guess, because of the way the the game seems to model trade. Loss of grain from Galicia leads to hunger in Austria-Hungary. We also hurt their national morale by taking those oil fields. B-52 
BLW United 1, thanks for the follow. Russian morale is boosted by the capture of the Glacian oil fields. Given the likelihood of war with the Ottoman Empire, steps need to be taken to ensure that we do not lose access to our oil supplies. Coming from the Abadan oil fields near Basra, a plan has been proposed wherein, whereby the Indian army will send a force to seize Basra and Abadan oil fields the moment the war breaks out with the Ottomans. Preparing such a force will cost 100 MPPs at 50 per turn for two turns. Would you like the Indian army to prepare this force to seize Basra? Indian forces landed and captured Basra in a swift campaign in 1914, securing the oil fields and the city. It would be a mistake not to say yes to doing this, as it also opens up a potential new front against the Ottomans, and hopefully it will distract some of their forces from attacking our positions in Egypt. Again, like, why are you giving me a yes-no if, if you're telling me flat out it would be a mistake? Meanwhile, to increase the size of our naval forces and ensure our superiority over Germany, it is recommended that we seize the Ottoman ships currently being built in Britain and add them to the Royal Navy. If you agree, the Royal Navy will seize the dreadnought Sultan Osman, Osman I, renaming it Agincourt. She, uh, she should then be ready for active service in September. Would you like to seize the Sultan Om Osman I and deploy it as part of the Royal Navy? Yes, no. So this is a more interesting choice. This is something where you can... Um, influence <laughs> influence the game in a very different way so this is actually one of the choices where i think it's a good thing to give you a choice this is something historically the british did they historically seized this ship but it did anger the ottomans now i think it's a question where the ottomans wouldn't have really gone to war with the uh entente eventually once they had received the ship um, but you can see here saying yes will undoubtedly annoy the ottomans swinging them 10 to 15 percent toward the central powers however uh, doing so will not only add to our strength, but will save us from ever having to face the ship in battle at a later date. On the other hand, delivering the Sultan Osman I will swing the Ottomans 25-35% to 35 toward the Entente, potentially significantly delaying conflict with them. So you can see, if it swings from 25-35% to 35 toward the Entente, then that's potentially, you know, a 40 or 50% swing in total because of the 15% and, and 35 you add them together. Unfortunately, doing so would upset the Russians, however, due to the impact that delivering this dreadnought would have on the balance of power in the Black Sea, and this would reduce Russia's national morale by 2,000 points. If we go up here, we can see Russia's national morale is, well, I can't see what it is, but 2,000 points would be a considerable amount to swing it, so I am going to go ahead and seize the ships. Just because Russia is vital to my strategy, and so if we, if we lose them, that could be very bad. Meanwhile, you can see the British forces are deploying here uh, on the continent now. Belgian de detachment is deploying as well. We also get some additional Russian forces as the Russians continue to mobilize. And I definitely am looking forward to using them in our offensive against the Austrians next turn. I can also wake up sweat-soaked and screaming. Saucy, thanks for the sub. I appreciate the support. Entente naval units uh, north of Scotland blockade imports to Germany. Oh, I think I forgot to do anything with my naval units this term. Oops. Fear of German raiders upsets trade for the British Empire. Yeah, there, there's no real ability to do anything about those raiders, by the way. The game doesn't... It, it sort of off-map simulates the activities going on in other theaters, but Europe is the only theater you can really, really do anything with. Meanwhile, there's uh, refugees in Austria-Hungary due to our advance in Galicia. The Austrians have chosen to provide aid for those refugees, so that does help their morale, although it does hurt their uh, economy, basically. All right, so the Ottomans... Or the Austrians moved troops into Stanislaw and attacked our cavalry there. They're shifting some troops south to deal with the Russian onslaught, rushing through Galicia. Yeah, Matt, it was an unlucky first turn. Thanks, Saucy. Appreciate it. It was. I think that was very unlucky. I've, I simulated the first turn a couple times in this game, and I never lost uh, Belgrade. Also, losing that French Corps uh, in uh, Nancy is not great, especially if the Germans can swing troops in there and take that city. That's a national... There we go. They just took Nancy, and now we have troops that are kind of potentially flanked. They've broken our line there. We don't have any troops in Tool. I think I might get some troops mobilizing there. I guess we'll see. The cavalry unit north of Krakow just got destroyed. We're getting some bad rolls on... I mean, the cavalry at attack wasn't really a bad roll, but we're getting some bad rolls in this game. 
Hopefully we can at least hold Brussels for another turn. Ugh. Meanwhile, they're advancing closer to Poland, so that's going to be a difficult for us to try and contain. They did try and break through near Reims and attack our troops there. Whole bunch more Aust our Austrian troops deploying on the Serbian front. Troops entrenching. French morale falls due to the loss of Lille, as well as the loss of Nancy. Germany celebrates the capture of Brussels. Oh, they did take Brussels? It was the unit north of Brussels that didn't die. Huh. So Gerben joins the Ottoman fleet. And we're getting some more French units deploying, thank God. Ah. <sighs> All right, well, let's take a look and see. Deploying a bunch of troops near Primzel. Blockade of Germany, at least, is continuing. Hey, Commissar Vista. Or Vistu. Good to see you. All right, so we lost the French 20th Corps, the 1st Belgian Corps, the 2nd Russian Cavalry Corps, and the Sabak Detachment in Serbia. Be advised, the enemy may decide to use unrestricted naval warfare against our convoy routes, bringing supplies to the UK. By placing naval units on hexes marked with merchant ships flying a British flag, they could shut down our convoy routes, even if only temporarily. This could have a dramatic impact on our income. It is therefore strongly recommended we maintain naval forces available to attack enemy naval units operating in these areas. Fortunately, the enemy use of unrestricted naval warfare would annoy the U.S. government and, in the long run, could result in the U.S. joining the Entente. Uh, the regular army is too small. 40 MPPs for 15 turns. We'll get four cores ready for service in France. When? Thousands of able-bodied men are enlisting daily at recruiting stations all over the country, willing to fight for king and country. With so many men coming forward to serve their country in time of need, it would be foolish not to say yes. I'm guessing I get some kind of discount on that, but... All right. So... Um, yeah, move these guys west. So they've also driven south there. So one thing we need to do. Can I counterattack here? I could. These guys need to reinforce. I'm playing as the Entente, Commissar. Alright, so we destroyed the enemy unit there. And retook Nancy, which is a national morale objective. Move our troops in there. We'll see if we can keep holding that, that objective. But we did destroy one enemy unit, and the units adjacent are not at full strength, so that should help. I mean, ooh, two to five? Hell yeah. You give me two to five on any attack in this game, and I'm going to take that. All right, we just destroyed another German cavalry corps. Move our own cavalry corps south of Reims. Move these guys... Here, here. Okay, so the good news is uh, we are probably try let's do this. Oh, 
That was not a very deadly attack. I had hoped that would be a little bit... A little bit of a stronger attack than that ended up being. Force marching, I know, hurts efficiency and effectiveness and morale and all of that, but I got them in place so that if they destroy the third core, we'll have a unit directly behind. Um, all right, so we've got... All right, can these troops entrench? They cannot. All right, so at least these troops... Oh, no, I entrenched the wrong way. Damn it. Really, they can entrench when they're in a fort? How useful is that? We're going to throw this garrison on a transport and throw it into... Alone as well, just to sort of afford defense. Belgium's going to fall. There's no doubt about that. The The intent is to keep them bottled up and out of as much of France as we can. Meanwhile, I don't want to rail them to the front line as much as it would be nice to give a little bit of support to the troops in, in Belgium. So, because that's bad, like, if you roll them to the front line, they'll often get crushed. So we'll put those guys there. The French have a little bit of money left. We'll reinforce our Air Force with our money. I don't think there's any troops I can reinforce, because I've attacked with all the troops that are below full strength. be interesting to attack here, though. Uh, these guys are already dug in, so I think we'll keep that money for the time being. Maybe reinforce the fleet. Maybe that's worthwhile. I don't know. Meanwhile, the British. Well, for our navy here, let's swing these troops out a little bit. Throw some destroyers on these national morale objectives to guard our, our trade, I guess. I don't know that using leaving these pre-dreadnoughts in the channel is all that useful. Like, I don't think the Germans are going to invade <laughs> directly. I don't think they've got the forces to do it in the first place. Um, but we probably shouldn't completely... Leave the channel open. So that's kind of all of our British money. But by putting these guys on these national morale objectives, it probably makes it impossible for the subs to move there directly. <laughs> the way they've drawn the Netherlands is uh, out of your nightmares. Well, that's good to know. All right, meanwhile, there is an Austro-Hungarian destroyer up here that's just asking to be destroyed by the French fleet here at the... Uh, mouth of Italy. No, we ran into mines! Shit. Well, it did some damage to us. We didn't finish the enemy off. Uh, we do have some ships here. So we've got the British Battle Cruisers Indomitable and Black Prince. Or the Black Prince is an armored cruiser. And then we've got some other vessels here based out of Malta. I don't know that there's a ton of use for these guys. Like, we've got subs too, but like, what am I going to do with them? I mean, we can base ships out of Malta to cut... Uh, supply lines or, or protect them. But Germany has no trade in, in here that I can cut off. I suppose we can th throw troops at the base of the Dardanelles in the event that the Ottomans get into the into a fracas with us. 
We'll need these these vessels should Italy declare war on us. We did turn off the Italy to the Entente event, so there's a likelihood that in 1915 they may declare war on us. I suppose we could send some of these guys in to maybe bombard the Austrian troops that uh, might be advancing on Montenegro. We'll pull these guys back to reinforce that port. Reinforce this guy here. Move this guy adjacent. Can he move and entrench? He cannot. Meanwhile, our troops in Serbia here will dig in. What's the, what's the supply situation? Not great. Now let's reinforce that headquarters to full strength and this infantry unit as much as we can. These guys need to entrench. I wonder, does anybody know if you do a two-sided entrenchment rather than three, does the game make it stronger? Yeah, Jake, I suppose if the Germans are aggressive, they could force a naval battle that would be disadvantageous to us. Most of my dreadnoughts are pretty concentrated on the North Sea line. I don't think they'll be able to break through in one one shot. Okay. Thanks for the follow, Aussie in Canada. Appreciate it. All right. Meanwhile, is that Serbia that is? Oh, it's Russia that is 230 points. All right. Let's not forget about the Russian front, shall we? Lemberg, I want you. This cavalry is going to fall back because it's almost dead. Frontal attacks are the Russian way. Forwards. All right, so we've taken... Lemberg as well, which is another national morale location. Reinforce this guy. Ah! Never march headlong into an enemy position. All right, entrench the other way, boys. All right, let's move. We're gonna move this cavalry elsewhere. Yeah, Ozzy, I should, I should have a better streaming schedule. That's something that is sort of on my bucket list for this year to do actually set a schedule. All right, move these troops back to wherever that place is and then destroy that cavalry unit. Got him! Okay, so we destroyed another uh, Austrian unit. We also took another Austrian National Morale Center. Serbian national morale is down to 86%. The Russians are at 99. Germans are at 100. And Austro-Hungarians are at 96. Okay. So we destroyed that cavalry unit, which should end the threat to Poland from that direction. Also, uh, we have put another strong infantry corps on the road from Krakow, so again, should end the threat from that direction. Uh, we're trying to surround the German troops in Gum Gumedin, or however you pronounce that. Let's 
So I think we'll move these guys here. Completes the encirclement. They could break out of the encirclement to the east, but that would just push them deeper into Russia, so I'm not too worried about that. Reinforce that core here. So these guys are surrounded, and I would think will get destroyed. You know, I'm going to reinforce these troops in Poland that just suffered some casualties in that first turn of fighting. Get them back up to strength. I don't really want to try and push into Germany with, with light units like that. I would. Actually, can this cavalry entrench? It can. Facing north. Thanks for the follow, Dastrix. Um, there's no reason to waste these guys down by brest -Litosk. Let's go ahead and move these to Lubin, just in case. All right, so we are going to rail some additional troops in with the money that we have. I don't think there's any reason to leave Russian cores back by, like, St. Petersburg or anything like that. Or Moscow, for that matter. I'm not planning to drive too hard into eastern Poland. If I see an advantage like at Gumden, I will do that, but I really don't want to try to open that front up. I think I'd be much better served trying to crush the Prussian army. So I think that's going to be what largely what our strategy will be. It's also where almost all my headquarters units are located. I think that might be all I have here this turn, though for the Russians. I could reinforce the Russian fleet, but I'm not sure that makes a ton of sense either. Got a little bit of money left for the Russians. I've got some money for the U.S. Apparently I only made four MPPs for the U.S. I guess we're only at 6% mobilization. So I can't really do much with the economy or the uh, diplomatic portions of the game at the moment. And I don't... All I have is naval units there. I'd love to start building destroyers as the British. Do the Russians have any units that aren't in the Baltic? Any naval units up north? No. Alright. Well, I guess for the French Navy next turn we'll start deploying more of it against the uh, convoy routes. The real challenge is going to be in the event that Italy does join the Central Powers, is that's going to put a real strain on the naval situation in the Mediterranean. Yeah, I mean, if I can crush the Habsburgs, that would be great. That'll open up an entire flank on the Germans. But that's probably a little ways away still. So we'll go ahead and wrap this turn up and uh, bring the next one forwards. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for the first turn of Strategic Command World War I. Uh, our look at the Entente or Allied playthrough. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. This was taken from a live stream. I'm sure you could tell from my Twitch channel. I don't usually do two-turn episodes, but... Um, one felt a little bit short. I know this one's pushing an hour, so it's a little bit longer, but let me know your thoughts. You know, do you want to keep these sort of two-turn-like, or uh, is, uh, is a 30-minute playthrough uh, something you'd prefer? Just because uh, I have a feeling that one-turn episodes will be too short, and two-turn episodes are going to be a little bit long, so I'm curious to hear what you all think. But that being said, please leave your thoughts down below. Let me know if you're excited for this series. And until next time, as always, guys, I'll catch you guys around. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.